drive today, we drive the new Kawasaki 175, get behind the wheel of the Aston Martin DBX 707 and bring you sights and sounds from the 6th edition of the Great India Drive. Hello and welcome to Overdrive, I am Sony Dutt. I hope you all have been having a very good holiday season and have had a crackling start to the new year. We've got some very exciting stories lined up for you today to get 2023 started on a very high note. Now, Kawasaki India is coming back into the small capacity single cylinder motorcycle space with the W175. Now, this is a retro styled motorcycle which borrows cues from the W800, but does it deliver on that promise? Let's find out. Those of you who are well versed with the Indian motorcycling scene of the 80s and 90s would know that Kawasaki was a very popular brand when it came to commuters, power commuters, etc. Of course, years passed, some of their alliances worked, some didn't. And then Kawasaki started focusing only on premium motorcycles. Today, their range starts at 300 and then goes all the way up to the H2. However, they now want to get back into that commuter space, get a larger slice of the pie. Let's put it that way. They want a mass market motorcycle. And their answer for that is this, the W175. The W obviously comes from their retro range of motorcycles. We are well versed with the W800. But now the 175 aims to get in the big numbers. Will it? And that pie that I was referring to belongs to Royal Enfield and everyone wants a piece of it. I think a Ninja 175 priced and spec to take on the Yamaha YZF R15 would have been a better bet. But right now, it is the adventure motorcycles and the modern retros that are the most sought after segments and hence the W175. Of course, the all black look might work for some, the red actually looks better, but I think given the Kawasaki DNA, the corporate color or the signature, they ought to have made one in green. Maybe they could still make one as a limited edition, one in green with slight golden pinstripe accents or maybe golden spoke wheels. That could look nice. For starters, the chassis has a slightly different geometry and the tank is of 12 liter capacity instead of the 13 liter unit that goes on the global models. In terms of the measurements, one litre may not really amount to much. But here, in terms of the proportions, it actually does. Compared to the global model of the W175, which runs a one litre larger tank, the proportions actually look a lot better for that classic or that old school look. Here, because it's just a little smaller, this ends up looking more like a commuter. The pea shooter exhaust does try to save the design a bit, but more meat would have helped the proportions of the 175. The flip side is that the riding geometry is more relaxed and doesn't need you to stretch out for the handlebars. Long story short, our W175 is slightly smaller to fit a wider variety of riders. Shorter riders will appreciate the low seat height, while the fairer sex or those with a smaller frame will appreciate the lightweight feel of the motorcycle. I'm impressed how light and nimble the new Royal Enfield Hunter 350 feels in comparison to the classic 350 to attract a new breed of riders to the Royal Enfield clan. But the Kawasaki W175 makes even the Hunter feel bulky and lazy to manure. And it's not surprising to see why. While it is not a fair comparison, the similar price tags and the body styles are likely to make certain consumers consider both these options and that is where the smaller engine size could deter the Kawasaki's ambitions. The highlight of this engine is the refinement that it offers. Even when you're riding at 100 on the highway, that's more or less the top speed of this motorcycle, you do not feel any vibrations in the handlebars. And let me draw your attention here, no bar and weights. Despite that, no vibrations, no vibrations in the pegs either. So that refinement is really something that you're paying all those top bucks for. As far as the torque is concerned, again, on paper, well, not very inspiring, but you'll be surprised at how well this motorcycle pulls in the city, out on the highway, not just with the rider, but also with the pillion. So do take a test ride before you make any decisions. This motorcycle is a lot more than what the spec sheet suggests. 30 to 90 kilometers an hour is its happy zone. And it's beyond this point that the motorcycle starts losing breath. And 100 km an hour takes ages to reach and highlights the low power output of this engine. But the mid-range torque doesn't leave much room for complaint. The 
other reason why this motorcycle will prove that it is more than the sum of its spec sheet is the suspension setup. It might seem like puny old school suspension, but it takes on these kind of roads extremely well. Again, with the rider and the pillion. The ride is supple, the motorcycle is easy, light, very nimble, very easy to handle even on rough surfaces like these. And what I really like is the kind of damping that it offers. Yes, the front has a little bit too much rebound. On some of the surfaces, there's a lot of movement at the front. But once you account for that, the motorcycle is easy to ride, easy to handle and easy to tackle bad roads with. The ride comfort is easily one of the best for a commuter in this segment. The wide seat, fore and aft, contributes further to that effect for both users. The motorcycle maintains its composure around bends quite nicely too, but the skinny tyres and the spongy brakes will limit how much enthusiasm you can show around winding roads. The brakes certainly need improvement in their bite and their feel, but the single-channel ABS works as advertised. This Kawasaki is not a quacker then, but the city is where the W175 shines, feeling easy to flick around and simply whizzing through the traffic with a likeable purr. Sure, those expecting a bit of thump from this retro body style will be left wanting. But the exhaust note isn't the typical single cylinder buzz and that refinement is what you will appreciate. I really like this motorcycle. Honestly, like I said, when I saw the spec sheet for the first time, even when I went for the launch for the first time and saw the motorcycle, I wasn't too sure about it. But after spending a couple of days with it, after riding this motorcycle for so long, I'm actually beginning to like it. The only fly in that ointment still remains the price. It's a bit too much, if you ask me, even for a likeable motorcycle like this. Elements like the basic instrumentation, a flimsy key, the simple bent pipe for a grab handle, or the large yet inadequate halogen headlamp is likely to make you feel shortchanged for this price. The latter also drained the battery within minutes when we forgot to switch off the electricals during a fuel stop. But these shortcomings, for the lack of a better word, are easy to ignore once you ride the bike. Because it is a simple, nice motorcycle and an alternative to the other modern retros in this price bracket if you're looking for something that is well-built, reliable and yet lightweight. Old-timers too, looking for an easy-going Kawasaki commuter, could take a liking to the new W175. Will all of this amount to the kind of numbers Kawasaki is expecting from the W175 though? Well, that I am not sure of. Well, we have promised to keep your adrenaline pumping, so we will get you a glimpse of the Aston Martin DBX 707 after this very short break. इतनी दूर हमारे लिए आपकी मेहनत कहां से कहां पहुंच रही है मैं आपके एक साइन के लिए यहां नहीं आ सकता हो गया आपका अकाउंट ओपन हर पंद्रह ओपन हो सकती है लगता है सिर्फ दिल एक्सिस बैंक दिल से ओपन द फ्यूचर इज हर टू मीन माय लाइफ इवन द पास्ट हैज बीन हर एंड द प्रेजेंट हैज बीन हर एज वेल वुमेन आर वे बेटर एनीवे बिकॉज़ वुमेन आर एन अनस्टॉपेबल फोर्स दे मूव कंपैशनेट मोर इमोशनली अवेयर इंटेलिजेंट दे आर रीराइटिंग द रूल्स redefining the power equations and reimagining a more just a more beautiful world a mega initiative to make gender parity an attainable reality hsbc presents cnbc tv 18 future female forward the women's collective <laughs> constant in today's world to win in unpredictable markets beat inflation and protect your finances from geopolitical risks you need to build a volatility proof portfolio and that's why we're back with Navab and the Wizard 
watch Ramesh Damani in conversation with influential market veterans as they share their insights and analysis of the complex world order, the future of investing and building a portfolio for an ever-changing world. Wizards of the Street at these times. How about listening to global market maestros before crafting your investment strategy? How about getting deep insights into their businesses from top Indian honchos before putting your money on the line? How about making every trading day profitable with strategies from the market masters, macro pundits, and chart wizards? Only one show gives you a head start to your trading day. Get ready to profit. Get ready for business with Bajar at these times on CNBC TV 18 and CNBC TV 18.com. Meet the champions who are breaking the barrier at the workplace. The change makers who are coming together to chart a new path towards gender parity. You need women to realize that they can do a great job at home as well as in the office. Conversations such as this will trigger more and more corporates, more and more managements. A mega initiative to make gender parity an attainable reality. HSBC presents CNBC TV 18's Future Female Forward, the Women's Collective. Welcome back, you're watching Overdrive. Now, whenever anyone mentions Aston Martin, it's very natural to think of the individual who wears sleek suits, who prefers his drinks shaken, not stirred, and who also prefers a set of wheels which are as suave as his personality. Now, James Bond may not be waiting in line to drive the Aston Martin DBX 707, but Rohit got a chance to drive what is the most powerful SUV in the country today. On the cars that I've been reviewing for the past few weeks, I have seen the grills go really small or even disappear because, you know, hybrids, EVs, etc. So for a change, it's a good thing that I have a car with a big grill on it. Now, in today's scheme of things, big grills mean four things to me. One, it could be a BMW, but then again, this is tastefully designed, so it's not. Two, it could mean it's a saloon, but this is not. Three, it could mean it's an SUV. And four, it could mean that the big grill really needs to cool a fire-breathing monster of an engine. This car is both those things. The Aston Martin DBX is one quick car, I'm told. I wouldn't know, because I never drove it in its standard avatar. It's been eluding me for years now, much like most Aston Martins that usually shy away from the glitz and the glamour because the typical owners of Aston Martin cars prefer to keep their refined taste a private affair. But the DBX 707 is different. It wants to be seen, wants to be heard because it is the fastest and the most powerful of its kind, at least until the newest and the tallest steed from Maranello starts prancing. But the 707 isn't one bit as aggressive as its Italian friends. DBX is often considered minimalist and the smooth curves in the hunchback also makes the DBX appear smaller than its class, more so in the images. But look at the 707 from any angle, rolling on its standard 23-inch rims at any speed and you know it means business. The carbon fiber skirts along the rocker panels, the bigger grill and the extended spoiler and splitter will all tell you that this is the faster sibling. But all of this is within the bounds of typical Aston Martin elegance. If you want to impress the onlookers with the sound of the V8, a nice crackling startup, what you do is, before you start the vehicle, press in either of the paddle shifters, press firmly on the brake, the red light over here starts flashing on the ignition. Get that little pop right in the back. How cool is that? These carbon ceramic brakes are larger than the cast iron rotors on the standard DBX and still save 40 kilos. I was an idiot not to go to the Buddha International Circuit and drive this car on the racetrack at launch. It's bonkers. Of course, this engine is sourced from Mercedes-Benz, from Mercedes-AMG, but the tuning has happened under the same guy who was also the ex-boss at AMG. So he knows this engine pretty well, which is why, you know, the development has been so good. They've been able to really push it, get these 707 PS kind of an output out of it. And to cope up with all that power, there's also the 9-speed gearbox, which has been given a wet clutch treatment, much like the GT4 door from AMG. 
Simply put, the German V8 is pushed to its limits on the 707. Bud speaks with British mannerisms, greeting the onlooker with a deep, warm voice instead of speaking to them in a rude, high pitch. With all that power also comes launch control, a race launch control. And it's pretty simple. Just make sure the car is in Sport or Sport Plus, depress the brake pedal completely and you're ready to launch the car. Get it right and it will literally catapult from standstill to 100 kilometers an hour in a little over three seconds. Top speed, 310 kilometers an hour. Honestly, the acceleration is brisk. In fact, brisk is an understatement for this. And with that 9-speed transmission, it is an ultra-fast transmission, but every shift pause with this kind of acceleration translates to these little head nods. So the transmission, the way the power is laid out down to the road, it feels so dramatic, dramatic than even the Vantage F1 that we reviewed recently. You will seldom, seldom find enough space and time on our roads to really put the power down the way it's intended. That's the kind of performance that this car has. It's just crazy. So the most powerful, the fastest SUV tag or the claim in the world, it's not only about the higher numbers, it's also about how it gets there. It's just crazy. It is just crazy. And what's the use of all of this power, all of this speed, if it can't really go flat through corners? So to enable that, there is 48 volt electronics. So this is not just a sports car on stills. This is not just an SUV from a traditional sports car maker. It also goes like a sports car around the bends. It is unreal how this thing feels, how good this thing feels. I think as of now, this is also the best super sport UV that I've ever driven. So that sort of sums it up for me. It all comes together to create a performance so enticing that you will want to take the DVX 707 to the track often and even give some low riding sports cars a run for their money, overtaking as you look down on them from your high chair. It's a feeling that very few cars offer at the moment. But these are times when what one shows to the world is more important than what it makes you feel. Does the DBX's understated elegance work in such times? Well, I'm sure it does. Elegance is timeless. There are still many out there who appreciate feel over specs. And the DBX 707 has both. I personally feel the Aston Martin DBX 707 is a gorgeous looking SUV and of course Rohit enjoyed driving it a lot. We'll take a very quick break here. Welcome back here with us on Overdrive. Now magnificent mountains, lots of snow and of course an adventurous drive. What I'm describing to you is the 6th edition of the Great India Drive with the all new Hyundai Tucson. Have a look. The Great India Drive, an adventure of epic proportions annually conducted by Hyundai Motor India began with a drive from Srinagar to Kargil. Braving sub-zero temperatures, high altitudes and traffic, a single convoy drove from the Kashmir Valley into the famous city of Kargil. But this story is not about that part of the drive. Our Great India experience begins elsewhere. Every experience you go through in life results in an opportunity to discover your true self. And for those who dare to dream and those who know their purpose, life's too short to miss out on experiences which are unforgettable. Awesome. 
Those were the most peaceful 15 minutes of my life. <sighs> Today we are here on our annual excuse to go on great expeditions all across the country. The Hyundai Great India Drive. And well, when I got to know about this year's Great India Drive, my fingers were crossed only for one thing. The Tucson. So today we are at Beer Billing, which is a small place in the Kangra district in Himachal Pradesh and is said to be the best paragliding spots in the country. We started our journey from Jammu and we'll eventually end up at Delhi. So let's see what is in store for us. On the road, the Tucson is a smooth ride. The 2-litre petrol engine coupled with the 6-speed gearbox is nice. But the best part about the Tucson is that it has got ample ground clearance to tackle any sort of Indian roads but it's not too tall to introduce a great amount of body roll. And this, coupled with the tuned, perfect suspension, makes it a dream to ride on these mountainous roads. The Tucson brand name has always identified to a great blend of edgy and classy. And the interiors on this are proof of that. The latest, sharpest ever Tucson design with a sporty silhouette this front fascia is everything with the dark chrome DRLs integrated into the front grille. And it makes it look fierce yet stealthy. No doubt, this is by far the best looking luxury SUV in the market. Today we are taking the Tucson to a very important place in our books. And which is like a very short drive away from Palampur. Andretta is an artisan's colony which dates back to 1920 when an Irish theatre practitioner, Nora Richards, shifted here from Lahore. With such a picturesque backdrop, no wonder this is a melting pot of art which has attracted many noted artists, theatre practitioners and painters from across the country and the world. Andretta Pottery is one of the oldest studio potteries of India. It was started in 1983 by a couple known as Mansimran Singh and Mary Singh. So pottery for me is something which has changed me as a person itself, you know, I was impatient, we want everything quick. And with, with clay it's completely opposite, you know, there has been time when I have to wait for one piece over a month long because it's drying slowly and I have to go through a different processes. So it teaches you patience a lot and um, also in a way it's very meditative. In the sense that uh, when I'm on the wheel and I'm focusing on one thing, that focusing on one thing is meditation, right? This is just something which comes from within. Hold a lump of clay and squeeze it and just have fun with it and create. And you get the sense of satisfaction and creation. And I think that's a wonderful feeling when you create something. The pursuit and appreciation of artistic qualities is essential for a life well lived. And we are here appreciating Hyundai's untiring efforts towards a sustainable future through their cutting edge tech and constant innovation. And places such as Andretta, which truly are pieces of art, need to be sustained. And that's what we are here for. Well, with that, it's time for us to wrap up this week's edition of Overdrive. But remember, you can stay in touch with the team through Facebook, Twitter, as well as YouTube. And you can follow our latest updates on Instagram. And once again, let me wish all our viewers a very happy new year.